Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, I want to talk to you about the Russian Angara rocket. There's one of these preparing to launch out of Plisetsk, uh, hopefully before the end of the year, but the last two times it launched were in 2014. Angara has been in development for a very long time. It is, its origins actually date back to the sort of end of the Soviet Union. While the Soviet Union existed, they developed many launch vehicles, Soyuz, Proton, Cosmos, Cyclone, Energia, Zenit, Rocket. But when the Soviet Union dissolved in 1991, all these rockets became the properties of separate independent nations. Some rockets would have structures built in Ukraine, engines from Russia, and then they were launched from Kazakhstan. After the fall of the Soviet Union, when they wanted to launch a new crew to the space station Mir, it took a lot of diplomacy to get the necessary partners to agree to get the hardware together and launch. Meanwhile, Sergei Krikalev and Alexander Volkov remained on the station until they could be relieved by a new crew. So, in you know, post-Soviet Russia, the Angara rocket began as the idea to make a pure Russian rocket, rocket to get over needing to rely on these other countries. Not only would it be designed and built in Russia, it would also launch from the Placets Cosmodrome in the north of Russia. Perhaps most significantly, the Angara 5 is planned to replace the Proton rocket, which is especially politically sensitive due to the fact that it has hundreds of tons of toxic propellants on board. Now, if you look back, the first designs were really odd and Anatoly Zak's Russian space web has a few pictures of early designs which look really odd. They have these weird drop tanks sitting on the side. Um, but anyway, the design that has been finalised is built around the idea of clustering common booster cores called Universal Rocket Modules or URM. These have a standard RD single, you know, RD191 engine burning kerosene and liquid oxygen. The smallest example is the single core Angara 1.2, and the one about to be tested is the Angara 5 with a single core and four strap-on boosters. They've also had the Angara 3 and the Angara 7, obviously with that number of cores. And at first sight, it's all very practical and all very Kerbal. The first stage, URM-1, are 26 metres long and 2.9 metres in diameter. They each mass about 140 tonnes when fully fuelled with kerosene and liquid oxygen. The RD-191 engine is a single chamber version of the four chamber uh, RD-170, which was originally designed for Ener Energia, and that's closely related to the dual chamber RD-180, which is used in the Atlas V, and it's essentially identical to the RD-181 that's used on Antares. And this is a great engine. It's got decades of reliable flight history. It produces about 200 tons of thrust, and its specific impulse, its efficiency, is much better than SpaceX's Merlin engine because the RD191 uses a closed cycle, taking the exhaust from the turbines, the turbo pumps, and feeding that into the main combustion chamber rather than dumping it over boards. Most importantly for this design though, the RD191 can throttle down from 100% down to 30%. So that core uh, module, it can run at much lower thrust and leave propellant for use after those outside boosters are staged off. So the boosters normally burn for about three and a half minutes and then the core will continue for another two minutes or so. Now there's a second stage URM, that's the URM2. It's actually similar to a Soyuz 2 second stage, but it's got a larger diameter. It also uses the RD0124A engine and it's basically identical to the Soyuz 2. That's again, it's a closed cycle kerosene oxygen engine. There's two versions of this though. One is basically the same as the Soyuz stage. It's only 2.7 meters in diameter and that's about 28 tons. Uh, that's going to be used for the Angara 1.2. There's also the fatter version that's 3.6 meters in diameter and that's about 36 tons, which is intended for the multi-core Angara 5. There is a third stage, which is in the form of the well-tested Breeze M, and that's been flying on Proton for more than 20 years. This is needed to inject payloads into geostationary orbit. There's also a proposed high-energy hydrogen-fueled upper stage known as the KVTK, 
which could extend geostationary capabilities. It's not clear how much development this has actually had at this point, but they have actually built a hydrogen second stage for India. So anyway, after years of stop-start development, the first flight of anything resembling the universal rocket modules was actually the first, the first stage of the South Korean Naro-1 rocket. And that flew three times from 2009 to 2013. The only, there was only one flight that was actually successful, but in all three flights, the first stage was said to have worked correctly. The first Russian flight of an Angara was the Angara 1.2 PP. Uh, this was a something of an oddball. It was basically the URM1, which was the core, and then a URM2. So instead of having the narrow second stage that was normally being the 1.2, they had the fat second stage that was designed for the multi-core versions. So yeah, not a configuration that was ever intended to enter service, but you know, they'd already had plenty of testing of the regular uh, Block 1 core because that would fly on the Soyuz. They wanted to test the, the URM too. So the whole thing massed about 170 tonnes, fully loaded on the pad, but it was never intended to reach orbit. It, it flew from Plisetsk on 9th of July 2014 and both stages operated as expected. The trajectory carried it east over Russia towards an impact about 5,700 kilometres away in the Kura test range. So this trajectory is actually used for many missile tests, so there was actually a lot of tracking hardware already along that path. Now the second test flight was the much larger Angara 5, and this was a real flight configuration. Four URM1 boosters around a single core. The URM2 second stage and a Breeze M third stage and a dummy satellite. The mission wasn't broadcast live, after all it was a test flight and a failure would be unsurprising, but also very embarrassing. But it did, it successfully lifted off, all stages operated correctly and it carried the test object into a geostationary orbit for a few days before it shifted into a graveyard orbit. So now, the next launch was originally intended for 2016, but it seems that manufacturing delays kept pushing this date back and the final URM1 booster never left the factory until 2018. And then Roscosmos had it in their hands and they were testing it for a couple of years Finally, in the middle of this year, they uh, finally shipped it off and moved it out to Plisetsk. They were looking for a commercial partner who wanted to fly a payload on this test launch, but it looks like nobody has turned up for this, so it looks like it's going to be another dummy satellite. But yeah, it's sitting in Plisetsk right now, and it's supposed to launch November 24th. I won't be surprised if that slipped. After all, this has been taking a long time to get to where it is. So yeah, it, as of right now, I'm, I'm hoping this flies before the end of the year, but as of right now, it's not clear whether any other variants of the Angara will build or fly anytime soon. There was an Angara 1.1 and that didn't have a second stage. Instead, it was a core with a Breeze M upper stage. That was rejected because it had similar performance to the Soyuz 2.1V. The Angara 3 was confirmed to be shelved because it overlapped with the Soyuz 5, which is in development. Angara 7 is the largest and might be able to put 40 tons into low Earth orbit, but there's no sign of that, that being developed, and it looks like there's another A Angara 5 variant which might render it obsolete anyway. There was a crude version proposed called the A5P, uh, that would eliminate the third stage and have a uh, you know, large capsule with a you know, final stage and an escape tower. Um, they did actually award a contract for this, but that appears to have been abandoned in favour of the Soyuz 5. There's also two improved versions of the Angara 5, which appear to still be in development. So there's the Angara 5M, and that uses the upgraded RD191M engines. Those deliver about 10% more th uh, thrust, and that enables it to deliver about 10% more payloads to low Earth orbit. And then there's the A5V, which replaces the second stage with the URM2V, right? V means Vodorod, which I believe is the Russian word for hydrogen. I probably mispronounced it. So the URM2V gets rid of the uh, second stage and replaces it with a larger hydrogen and oxygen stage propelled by a pair of RD-0150 engines. 
And then it has the hydrogen, the KVTK upper stage on top of that. And that is supposed to be able to put about 12 tons onto a geostationary transfer orbit, making it easily capable of keeping up with even the largest of commercial communication satellites. At least if it flies, right? Now they have to demonstrate another successful flight from the one that they actually have and maybe show that the next one won't take six years to get built and tested. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.